Freedom is never more than one generation away from extinction. You and I have a rendezvous with destiny. You know what time it is, so sit back and get ready for the Stafford Voice, your dose of conservative in a world of liberal. Three, two, one. Hey, how you doing? I'm your host, Daniel Stafford, and you are listening to The Stafford Voice, where we are conservative in a world of liberal. And I'm, ga- I'm not going to lie. I am tired. I'll get into it after a bit. And... But tonight, we're going to talk about a whole lot of butthurt. There are many ways to listen. So set this channel as a favorite, whatever you have to do so you don't get left behind. And if for some strange, crazy reason you do miss the show, you will be able to catch the replay. So, just sit tight. There is no need to panic because I've got you. In the case you aren't already following on the social medias, you can find me over on the Twitters at Stafford Voice, or on Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, look, wherever you're at, just search for the Stafford Voice, and you'll more than likely find us. If you have any problems getting to wherever you're needing to go because you want to follow us there, shoot me an email. I personally answer every single one of them. All you got to do, email me at the Stafford Voice at gmail.com. Now, I apologize because I'm trying to get things going and I'm, uh, hang on, let me, I gotta send this tweet real quick. Okay. Sorry. I, listen, we, with the new station, that's right, it's new. KLRNradio.com slash chat if you're trying to get to the chat room. Again, let me say that again. It's KLRNradio.com slash chat. I apologize. I have not been able to update uh, the StaffordVoice.com slash listen live. You, you can still listen live to the show. Unfortunately, the chat room is... It's not live yet over there. Uh, I'm still working on it. I apologize, but things have just been a little hectic. And let me explain. Last week, um, I got a phone call from one of my previous scouts. And he the, uh, he, he wanted to join the military. And I applaud him, and kudos to his parents. I couldn't be more proud of them for the way that they've they've handled the situation. At this time, the last thing any parent wants to do is worry about the the well being of their of their children. And going into the military right now is definitely a difficult task. You you have no idea what the future holds, none whatsoever. With that being said, he was extremely excited and pumped. So when he finally went to the local MEPS station to go do the, the weigh-in, the height, do, do all of the medical exams, and, ra- and at the end of the day, raise his right hand, get his paperwork, and be shipped off to basic training, he, uh, he didn't make weight. I, I know that sounds I know that's I know how crazy that sounds but he didn't make weight. And this guy's always had kind of a, a smaller frame. But I didn't think it would be it would be a deterrent to hold him back. But they sent him home. So now he's tasked with trying to put some weight on and some size because you know he's 
He's got to get a little bigger. With that being said, I got a phone call. He asked me for some help. I volunteered. No big deal. Anything for a brother that's willing to be a brother in arms. And obviously, as a previous scout leader, I wanted him to know that I was there for him. His proposal was from 4 in the morning till 5 o'clock in the morning. He would come over, we'd go down into the gym, and we'd pound some iron. So this morning comes around 3.30 this morning. Okay, I couldn't sleep because I was so excited that here, here I was going to be able to train um, one of the one of the military's next up and coming elite dudes. Four o'clock came around, nothing. A couple of minutes go by, nothing. So you know what? I I said screw it. Uh, I'm up. I'm pumped. I'm gonna go work out. Haven't heard back from him. I don't know if I scared him off or what. I hope not. But I did send him a message earlier. I did send him a message the night previous that said, Hey, don't forget, 4 o'clock in the morning comes early. I'm pumped. I know he got the message because it was a Facebook message and he his little... The little window of his face was down there next to the message, so I know he got it. I don't. Maybe he was just scared that he was going to get it handed to him. But all of that aside, I don't know what kept him from being able to come over and, and do this. I don't know all the circumstances. We're hoping for something big tomorrow morning and see where it goes from there. Uh, also, if again, if you're jo- trying, if you're out there looking for the chat room, it's in a different place. Okay, we are again on the new, the new station, klrnradio.com/chat. If you're out there listening and you're trying to frantically find the chat room and you can't find the normal people that you're looking for, you can't find Slickery Trigger, you can't find Army John. They're there. We're there. We're Look for us. You'll find it. So let me let's let's jump into this this whole lot of butt hurt. Okay, this all started because Trump gets called out during the DNC, not the medical one, but uh, maybe it should have been a, a medical procedure. But he gets called out during the DNC by uh, Kazir Khan. It, which is the father of a fallen um, army captain. Uh, I troubles pronouncing the first name, so forgive me. Humayun Khan. Okay? Captain Khan. Not Khan as in C-O-N, but K-H-A-N. Anyway. He said that Trump vows to build walls and ban Muslims from America. Now, in a true, he that's true. He did at one point say that that he wanted to build a wall. He wants to keep. He wants to, you know, basically say we can't bring these people over. Okay, listen, we gotta we gotta put a stop to this. Okay, we can't do it. We're killing ourselves if we keep it up. We're all gonna die. Okay, we gotta make our borders great again. That's Trump. Khan took it another step further, and he asked Trump if he'd ever re- even read the Constitution. He asked if he'd ever been to Arlington. That you'll see all faiths, genders, and ethnicities. And, and having personally been to... Um, Having personally been to Arlington, one of the most touching things I've ever done in my life was um, walking along those graves. It's it uh, it really chokes me up to even think about it. Um, and, and then Khan went for the jugular. I mean this this is what the Democrats do and. and Partly what Donald Trump has done so well that none of the other Republicans 
have done, and I'd say that tongue in cheek because we know that Donald Trump is the farthest left leaning Republican we've ever had. Uh, but he went for the jugular and said, quote, You have sacrificed nothing and no one. The only thing that comes to mind is, ouch. Obviously, that would stump Trump. Probably one of the only times that Trump probably tripped over his lip. Or the, uh, did he just, listen, did he just say that? I can't believe it. Look, I'm a great guy. I'm not going to say anything bad. I don't want to say that. I don't want to talk about Khan's connections to Hillary, okay? I don't want to do it. I'm going to bring it up, but I'm not going to do it, okay? It's not the kind of guy I am. But, ouch. Let's give this a different look. Let's take a look at this in a different light. And yeah, let me cover one of the comments that uh, Army John said. Uh, and he's... It, Started out with Slickery Trigger saying that Captain Khan is an American hero. His dad, not so much. Totally agree. But Army John went to say, I know it's a bad move to return fire to a Gold Star family, but at the same time, a Gold Star should not be used as a gold shield. Should not be used as a gold shield. Precisely. So let's take this into a different context. In an open letter from Army, from this guy's an Army veteran, and he's the founder of uh, U.S. Defense Watch. His name's Ray Starman. Okay, he, I think this guy knows a thing or two about what he's talking about. But he said that uh, many Muslims in America have no desire to assimilate. They just and, and that they want to live under uh, Sharia law. And he basically throws the Constitution back at Khan, saying that the Constitution itself is the law of the land. And, and then he went on to say this. Muslim madmen from ISIS and other radical jihadi groups are on a murder and terror spree across the globe. Now let me stop there, because if, if I don't bring this up, because even ISIS... Okay, ISIS has even put out their two cents on this whole thing, and they covered this in their newest, um, their newest addition to the magazine, De Beek, um, in an article titled "Why We Hate You and Why We Fight You." They're so current in producing this edition. that they included a picture of Khan's, Captain Khan's grave. That's how current ISIS is operating. They're paying attention, they're paying as close attention to U.S. politics as everybody else in the world. Now let's go back to um, what Ray Starman was saying. He said, uh, your religion of peace, Islam, is anything but that in 2016. That is a fact that is confirmed every time a Muslim shoots, bombs, beheads, and tortures innocent men, women, and children. This does not mean that every Muslim is a terrorist, but most terrorists, sir, are indeed Muslims. A Muslim terrorist attack has become the sign of the times. Regardless of what the, f the feckless, naive, leftist ideologue Barack Obama and his dim-witted colleagues John Kerry, Francois Hollande, and Angela Merkel state the United States and the West are at war with radical Islam. It is the job of the President of the United States to protect his nation from all enemies, foreign and domestic. Unfortunately, Mr. Obama romanticizes Islam and refuses to accept reality, which has resulted in the deaths of thousands of innocent people across the world. Groups like ISIS and Al-Qaeda have one goal. The complete destruction of Judeo-Christian culture, our religions, and our way of life.
I could not agree more with Starman's open letter. It's great. He, he touches on so many different areas. But there's, there's a little more to this. And, and before we get too far ahead of ourselves, it's pretty obvious that being the guy being so stuck on himself as Trump is, he had to fire back. He's just not the silent type. No way, no how. So he fires off three tweets. The first one he said, Mr. Khan, uh, let's see if we can do it. Mr. Khan, who does not know me, viciously attacked me from the stage of the DNC and is now all over TV doing the same. Nice. And then in the next tweet, he said, This story is not about Mr. Khan, who's all over the place doing interviews, but rather radical Islamic terrorism and the U.S. Get smart. Okay? And then in the third treat, tweet, he says, I was viciously attacked by Mr. Khan at the Democratic Convention. A am I not allowed to respond? Hillary voted for the Iraq War, not me. Okay? Not me. It, it genuinely seems that Trump has one of the biggest cases of butthurt of all time. Whether it's, look, whether it's Rupert Murdoch posting nude pictures of Melania from years ago when she was, <laughs> when, when she was a model, modeling, or fire marshals limiting the amount of people. He's butthurt. Beyond butthurt. I mean, he, he, w he went to Sam's Club and got a whole big bag of butthurt. Now, we, I, I, I just saw um, one of our admins, Ann, pop up in the chat room. Uh, I think overall everybody likes the look of the new chat room. We like it. Um, it it works way better. It's so much smoother than the old one. Um, and thanks for jumping in there, Ann, and checking up on us. Um, but again, if you're trying to find the chat room, again, it's klrnradio.com slash chat. Jump in there with some like-minded individuals. So let's... But we, the butthurt doesn't end with the, the nude pictures plastered on front pages of websites and newspapers. It doesn't end with Fire Marshal Bill saying that we've got to shut out people because the venue can only hold so many people. Oh, 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 oh no. This, I think this one really threw him over the edge over the last couple of days. And that was the debate schedule. He even complained to George Snuffleupagus saying, I'm going to do my best here. I, I, look, I suck at impersonating Donald Trump, but he, he's so much fun to make fun of sometimes. Okay. Okay, so listen. It, this, is, this is what he said to... Um, this is what he said, complaining to George Snuffleupagus. He said, quote, Well, I'll tell you what I don't like. It's against two NFL games. I got a letter from the NFL saying, This is ridiculous. Why are the debates against? Because the NFL doesn't want to go against the debates. Because the debates are going to be pretty, pretty massive, okay? From what I understand, okay? And I don't think we should be against the NFL. I don't know how the debates were picked, okay? I don't know. Never mind the fact that the NFL quickly came out and said they did not send a letter. Oh, burned again. Somebody get that man some ice. Somebody get that man some ice because he is... His backside is burnt. His backside... Too much butt hurt. Okay, listen. He's gonna make butt hurt great again. 
okay? Donald Trump single-handedly is making butthurt great again. Kudos to you. But in the end, we can't clear this con character. We can't clear him just yet. There's more to this guy than meets the eye. Wow, that rhymed. I should write that down. Okay, go ahead, write that down. You think you're big shit, Mr. Big Shot, okay? Okay, listen. Khan used to work at a law firm called Hogan Lovells LLP, which just happened to be a major DC law firm and has been on retainer as the law firm representing the government of Saudi Arabia in the United States for years. Now we got Army John in the chat room trying to throw me off. He's uh, talking about Sir Mix-a-Lot lyrics. I like um, Hurt Butts and I Cannot Lie. Some other brothers will not try. Oh, Jesus. I'm with Slick. I, you're, you're killing me, John. Okay? Again, back to Con the Con. Look. Maybe that's what we, maybe we need to trend that hashtag on um, the Twitters. Con the con. Hashtag con the con. Because this law firm that he used to work for are registered to work for the Royal Embassy of Saudi Arabia. And we all know how much Saudi Arabia has donated to the Clinton Foundation. It's somewhere between 10 and 25 million dollars plus okay they have dumped ungodly amounts of money into the clinton foundation to to push the clinton agenda we're talking big money people more on that later but big money people are behind clinton trying to take down Trump. Let's continue. So, how messed up does this get? This firm also is reported to have handled Hillary's taxes. The firm was also a major donor to her first campaign. And, guess, let Icing on the cake, ladies and gentlemen. Icing on the cake is when we find out that they also had eyes on Hillary's emails. That's right. This firm handled the patent for MX Logics. Now, that's the spam filtering program that was used on her private server. They handled the patent. They had a hand in helping Hillary way too many ways. It seems like Khan's hands were caught in the cookie jar. But let's not stop there. Let's take this a little step further and report that Khan's own personal law firm represents clients in the business of buying visas to enter the U.S. How do you like them apples, ladies and gentlemen? You probably don't like them too much. But I'm going to give you a minute or two to think on that when we, while we go to break, and then we come back when we come back, we're going to cover our profiles in history. This I had no idea who this dude was when I pulled him up. And yes, Army John, I Khan is just like Debbie was a man. Hired by Hillary. Hillary is beyond corrupt. Webster's Dictionary is so afraid to put Hillary's picture next to the definition of corrupt because it is it, it is too accurate in defining corruption 
Slick, I'm with you, and millions other. Slick just put up in the chat room that he doesn't know about y'all, but I'm getting damn tired of our government selling our country out from under us. They've been doing it for years. Been doing it for years. I mean, you got how many how many countries are part of the United Nations and versus how much the United States funds that organization. I think it was reported that we we fund roughly 70% of the UN. Sit on that for a minute. I mean, Hillary, I agree with I agree with John as you were as you put that up there, I was just getting ready to say it. Hillary Clinton makes Vladimir Putin blush. Beyond corrupt. Okay, so we're going to take a quick break. I'm your host, Daniel Stafford. You're tuned in to the Stafford Voice, where we are conservative in a world of liberal, and we're celebrating a little bit with the launch of KLRN Radio, where liberty and reason still reign. We will be right back. You are listening to KLRN Radio, where liberty and reason still reign. Nothing will protect you quite like your sidearm, so why not give it the protection it deserves? Something as strong as the Second Amendment and stands the test of time, and better yet, made in the USA. A Rebel Road Tactical Custom Kydex Holster is that and more. Call now and place your order with Rebel Road Tactical at 682-217-4579. Again, 682-217-4579, or online at rebelroadtactical.com. It's happening and nothing can stop it. It's the dramatic reinvention of Top Tight Radio. Here come the spa dolphins. The only thing that can cure racism is Robert E. Lee's penis. Who named this cat? Limberbutt McCubbin. A Trump bad debate. Plugs versus rugs. <laughs> Real serious nonsense. A show so bad, you'll laugh at us. The worst podcast. We obviously hold that title. Mondays, 9 p.m. Eastern. Some crowdfunding sites are too liberal and keep more for themselves. Even worse, if they don't like you or someone gets offended, they'll cancel your campaign. But not at RWNJ Funding. They hold true to conservative and libertarian values. Plus, they won't cave to the PC crowd. More importantly, they believe in you. RWNJFunding.com. The right cause, the right values, done right. RWNJFunding.com. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Conservative in a world of liberal. The Stafford Voice. All right, we are back, and I hope I don't bore you to death talking about tonight's Profiles in History. Uh, again, I apologize because I'm tired myself. I've been up since since 3.30 this morning. Uh, a great way to start the day out, nonetheless, you know, getting back into the uh, powerlifting thing again. Um, it, it's been quite a while. I felt great all day, but it's starting to catch me. It's really starting to catch me. So hopefully I don't put myself to sleep talking about tonight's um, Profiles in History. But nonetheless, tonight's Profiles in History is Carter Braxton. Carter Braxton was born on September 16, 1736 on Newington Plantation in Virginia. Although his mother passed away within days of his birth, he was born into a very wealthy family of planters. At the age of 13, his father passed away, leaving Carter and his brother, which was three years his elder, to inherit the Newington Plantation and various other lands in the county. Braxton attended the College of William and Mary, only to drop out a year later to marry Judith Robinson, who would die two years later during childbirth, leaving Carter two daughters, Mary and Judith. In his grief, he escaped to England in 1758, losing himself in the social scene in London, 
while attending Cambridge University, only to return back to the colonies two years later. Back in Virginia, things began to look up for Carter, where he married Elizabeth Corbin. She would eventually give birth, get this, to 16 children, six of which died either in infancy or young in their childhood. Shortly after the start of his second marriage, he turned his energies to trade, where he traded between the West Indies and the American colonies. While it's unclear if his business included slave trading, he owned many on his various plantations. Getting his feet wet in politics began in 1761, where Carter Braxton began by representing King William County in the Virginia House of Burgesses. Unfortunately, however, his brother George died on October 3rd of the same year, leaving an insolvent estate which resulted in the family losing their Newington plantation. In addition to the duties as a Burgess, he served as sheriff of King William County, colonel of its militia, and vestryman of St. John's Church, just a few miles east of his Cherokee plantation. Disputes within the parish led to the House of Burgesses to hold hearings, which resulted in the passing of a bill to dissolve the vestry. With the intent to protest the Townshend Acts, Braxton signed the first Virginia Association, but not the second that set up the boycott mechanism, or the third Virginia Association pledging not to purchase various East Indian products. However, when Carter returned to Williamsburg in 1774 as King William County's delegate, he joined with 108 others in the 4th Virginia Association that authorized local committees of safety as well as volunteer militia. Braxton always sought a solution that avoided violence, which was evident on April 20th, 1775, the day after the battles at Lexington and Concord. It was Virginia's royal governor, Lord John M. Dunmore, who seized the colony's gunpowder at Williamsburg and put it on a British warship. Now, Patrick Henry responded by gathering the local militia and marching to Williamsburg to get it back, to get payment or else. Dunmore called out the British Marines to get ready to stop the militia, but Carter Braxton stepped in as mediator. He couldn't get Henry to back down, so he went to his father-in-law and convinced him to pay the colonists for the seized gunpowder, and Henry disbanded the militia. Later that year in October, Virginia legislators elected Carter to take the place of Peyton Randolph in the Continental Congress who had died unexpectedly. He would serve there from February 1776 until August, when Virginia would reduce its delegation to five members, although he previously opposed the Declaration of Independence, which he explained in several letters and in a pamphlet he had published titled Address to the Convention as a reply to what John Adams proposed in his, um, his pamphlet Thoughts on Government. He did vote and sign the Declaration of Independence. In all, Braxton had invested a great deal of his own personal wealth in the American Revolution, lending money to the cause and even funding shipping and privateering, where he lost about seven ships which he held interests in. From all the accumulated war debts and the slow repayments from the Continental Congress, he sold a plantation and later wound up renting a row house in Richmond. It was here where Braxton would give his support to Thomas Jefferson's bill for establishing religious freedom in Virginia, which was later a model for the First Amendment of the Constitution. And on October 10, 1797, at the age of 61, Carter Braxton passed away in his home of a reported paralytic stroke. His wife would live until July 5th, 1814. 
again, I had no idea who Carter Braxton was. Um, he he seemed early on in life to be sympathetic to the British cause, but as he got older and a little wiser in dealings with others, it seemed as though he kind of um, turned around his ship, per se. Uh, fascinating individual. Again, his name was Carter Braxton. He did sign the Declaration of Independence, and for the next, uh, let's see, this was number four, so for the next 52 weeks, we will be covering each individual who signed the Declaration of Independence. One of our goals here on the show is to educate you and arm you with the history and the knowledge needed to continue to keep that fire burning that keeps this country so great and make sure that you have the knowledge to be able to um, go out there and be armed against liberals and Democrats, even quote-unquote Republicans who might just be stuck on stupid. Because there's a, there's a lot of stupid people out there. Now, if you haven't joined us in the chat room over at uh, klrnradio.com slash chat, you're missing what... You're missing the conversation. Let me scroll back through some of these comments because I missed some. Oh, John. Okay, so John puts up a picture of... Um, uh, he puts up a picture of a, a, a guy... I, maybe it is Russian. I don't know. But it's a picture of a big dude. And I think he's either... I, based off the way he's holding the bar, he's probably doing cleans, clean and jerks. And he says, <laughs> this 14-year-old Russian girl has been banned from the Olympics. Funny, because the dude's got a beard. Obviously, it's not a girl. Maybe it is, because if you've missed it, a lot of Russians have been banned from the Olympics. And then he also um, says... Uh, yeah, Hillary Clinton is about as honest as a female Russian Olympic weightlifter. <laughs> Probably. Um, can we put our Can we put away our dumb our dumb umbrellas because the Democrat convention is over? No, you can't. You can't because we haven't even gotten into the debates between Trump and Clinton, which that's going to be crazy. Um, let's see what did Ann say. The current crop of candidates, I'm not sure. It's wise to put... I couldn't agree with you more. You can't put that umbrella away. Maybe that's what we need. We need... We need to st we need to put together some umbrellas and just emblazed on on the top of them. Dumbrella. And, you know, we need to have, like, a the little KLRN logo... <laughs> <laughs> oh, Trump's going to get his, you know what, waxed at those debates. He very well could, Slick. I mean, he does not do well when he is forced to be on the defense. Trump loves being on the offense. He loves being the first one to initiate the, the, the argument because it gives him the upper hand. But... I think as long as Hillary can put Donald as long as Hillary can put Donald on the defense and get him flustered he's going to look like a babbling buffoon guaranteed guaranteed now I I need to say this now because I forgot to mention it earlier on at the at the start of the show unfortunately and I'll remind you later unfortunately we will not be here next week we will not have a show next week because this is birthday weekend 
my son's 20th birth our son's 20th birthday was over the weekend we took him we took him out to dinner to a local um authentic german restaurant he he's he loves um german history loves the the language the culture the food everything um mine is Friday, I turn the big 37. Yeah, I know. Whatever. <laughs> it's the big 37. <laughs> whatever. Yeah, I got a son. He's We have a son. He's 20 years old. Just turned 20. My birthday is uh, Friday. Uh, all weekend, my wife and I are going to celebrate uh, both of our birthdays because hers, it, John, I don't, I don't understand what you just said. Ich habe kein... I don't know what that means. I have something. I, I don't. I don't know what that means. I I understand ichaba. I have, but anyway. Oh, I have no idea. Thanks. Now I look. Le now who's the idiot? <laughs> Thanks. Okay, listen. I'm gonna make. I have no idea. Great again. Okay. I have no idea. None. I literally have no idea. Okay. Thanks, John. I appreciate that. You're in trouble, Sarge. You're in trouble. This soldier, <laughs> you better. You're gonna have to put me in. You're gonna have to put me down in front in the front leading rest position because I'm gonna be there for a while after what I'm gonna put you through. Anyway, uh, yeah, I know you got my six. I got yours too. Um, so my my birthday is Friday. We've got Saturday, Sunday, and then Monday is my wife's birthday. Holy cow, she turns thirty eight. She's like crested the hill and she is going off the deep end. Uh, I'm not far behind you. No, I'm not. But I'm a year behind. Okay, I'm still... I, I'm making young great again. <laughs> so you can laugh it up because eventually you're going to be on oxygen or something and I'm going to have to help you. Yes, you're not making old great again. You're not old. You're, you're going to be 38. Whatever. Yeah, we're young parents. <laughs> 27 always. No, I'm going to be 37. My son has just turned 20. Yes, you do the math. That made us 17 and 18. I have no issues with that. Very proud of the struggles that we've gone through and gotten to where we are today. Um and I'm very optimistic and energized of what the future holds. Uh, there's some really cool stuff coming up. So, again, no show next week, but know that... Uh, when's that 20-year-old joining the Army? I don't know. I've tried to ask him. I've, I've, he, at one point, he was dead set on joining the Army. And now... I don't know that he really want he he doesn't talk about it anymore. He doesn't want to do the Air Force. He doesn't want to do any of it. Tell him he needs to go to OCS. Oh God, I don't know about that one. Anyway, yeah, there's still time. You know, he's only twenty. He maybe maybe he'll wake up one day this week and he'll say, you know what, I need to join the army. I would fully back him, no matter what. Um, anyway. Where were we? Oh, yeah. So, no show next week, but know this. On the back end, not only am I continuing to work on updating the StaffordVoice.com, but we've got some incredible things coming up in the future for the show. I'm just going to say your mind is going to be blown. It's going to be great. We're, okay, listen, we're making the Stafford voice great again, okay? I don't like the guy. I'm not going to say he's a punk, okay? He made being a punk great again, but I'm not going to say that I'm a nice guy, but we're going to make the Stafford voice great again. So, on the back side, we're making some incredible moves forward on top of being part of this great great new um, station KLRN radio 
Um, but, you know, we've got to reserve time for that last little segment that we like to do. You know, who said that? So, we are going to take a break. I'm going to get some lemonade to um, wet my whistle with. And when we come back, we are going to do who said that. This guy proves money can't buy smarts. It just, uh, it's, that's all I'm going to say. But I am Daniel Stafford, host of The Stafford Voice, where we are conservative in a world of liberal. We'll be right back. You're listening to the Spark Radio Network, internet radio like you've never heard before. Innovation, creativity, and imagination are all said to begin with a spark. So fasten your seatbelt and take the ride of your life and listen for the spark. This is JD. And this is Stacy. Join us Tuesday nights, 10 p.m. Eastern, for Game On. Remember, lock up the children and the old folks. Game On, the home of little conservative conservative. Where no one is safe and no one is spared. Not even the hosts. Oh, like that was supposed to be a spin, spin cycle. cycle. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's okay. We love you anyway. Right round, baby. Self monitoring right anyway. Ebola radio strikes again. <laughs> anyway. Anybody uh, see the host monkey? Today. Where's the host monkey? Where's the host monkey? For God's sake, I need an antidote. Just anyway, do your rhythm. Let's pop out of the cycle second. has to do with <laughs> KLRN Radio has advertising rates available. We have rates to fit almost any budget. Contact us at advertising at klrnradio.com. Whether you're an employee or business owner, when it comes to the correct course of legal action, it's the first step that is important. And make that first step with attorney Ted Hong. You need someone you can trust and has the experience you need when it comes to workplace and employment law. If you've lost your employment due to discrimination, false accusations, or being denied benefits, you need Ted Hong. Or if you're an employer who wants to ensure compliance with workplace regulations and labor contracts, you need Ted Hong. Ted and his team also cover family and property law and estate litigation as well. Ted has over 30 years of experience, and him and his amazing legal team will provide you cost-effective legal consultation and make the experience all about you and your needs. For more information or to set up a consultation, contact the law office of Ted Hong at 808-933-1919 or visit tedhonglaw.com. Ted Hong, an experienced and principled attorney you can trust. 808-933-1919 or tedhonglaw.com. Conservative in a world of liberal. The Stafford Voice. All right, we are back. That's right. We are conservative in a world of liberal. I'm your host, Daniel Stafford, and this is the Stafford Voice. If that was enough of a teaser to tell you that I was working, that I'm going to be working on things <laughs> on the on the backside to um, take things to a whole new level. If you're not in the chat room, well, you missed out. So if you're in the chat room, you have to keep it under wraps. That's all I'm going to say. That's your bonus. That's your bonus material this week. You've got to be in the chat room, ladies and gentlemen. You've got to be in the chat room. Okay. So what time is it? It's that time. That's right. It is time for Who Said That? A little segment where we like to wrap the show up making fun of somebody who is completely stuck on stupid and removed all shadows of doubt about their ignorance. This week, we are delighted to hear from an individual who proves that money can't buy common sense or even intelligence for that matter. I've got one segment and then I'm going to say something about that and then we'll wrap it up with the last little segment where he's trying to be funny. Check this out. 
where where did here we go that on november 8th no matter how cold no matter how snowy no matter how rainy icy whatever it may be i'm going to take at least 10 people to the polls who might otherwise have difficulty getting there. Maybe they have transportation difficulties, whatever it may be. The election isn't decided by 125 million votes. It's decided by 538 votes. We have an electoral college in this country. We're in this unique position where a single congressional district could decide how the election comes out. So if you're voting in Douglas County or Sarpy County this year, uh, you're voting uh, as a we'll call it a super voter. And should this election turn out to be very close, your vote and a very few votes, maybe of your friends, could decide who becomes president of the United States. I hope that anybody that's watching this or has heard about it, first of all, make sure that they're registered to vote. Some people need encouragement on registering and talk to your neighbors, talk to your friends, talk, talk to your relatives, uh, and make sure they register to vote. It's not that hard to do. And then secondly, I hope that you volunteer to help those who might have trouble getting to the polls on election day, that you offer to uh, give them a ride and maybe, maybe make a couple of trips and make sure that everybody that wants to vote can actually get out there and vote. If you need a ride to the polls on Okay, no, it's not Bob Dole. And I stopped it a little premature because I didn't want to give it away um, just yet. But he's begging people to go out and if they need a ride to the polls, he'll give them a ride. Now, mind you, this is one of the richest men in America. So rich that he is calling out Trump by saying this. You will learn a whole lot more about Donald Trump if he produces his income tax return. And so, that's why I'd like to make him an offer. An offer I hope he can't refuse. <laughs> now, Donald Trump, Donald Trump, at one point, he says various things at different times, but at one point, and he said it several times, is that he can't do it, can't release it because he's under audit. Now, I've got news for him. I'm under audit, too. <laughs> and I would be delighted to meet him any place, any time between now and election. I'll bring my tax return. He could bring his tax return. Nobody's going to arrest us. It is not. There are, no, there are no rules against showing your tax returns. And just let people ask us questions. about it. That was none other than Warren Buffett. We had some great guesses in the chat room. None other than Warren Buffett, who is not only put up a website to help funnel voters to the polls to go vote. He's calling out Donald Trump and saying, I'll show mine if you show yours. I'm under audit. Money can't buy you common sense. Who gives a crap? The fact is, Hillary Clinton has the most wealthy people in the world. That's right, Saudi Arabia, Russia, America. Funneling money to help support her. It almost makes you want to get behind Donald Trump just to stick it to her. Because we all know Bill Clinton's not going to do it. He won't do it. Okay, that is unfortunately all the time we've got for this week. And God willing, the Stafford Voice will be back in two weeks. That's right, not next week. In two weeks, you can follow me over on the Twitters at Stafford Voice. Look me up on Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, wherever it is you want to control your social media. Just search for the Stafford Voice. If you have problems finding me or you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please feel free to direct them to thestaffordvoice at gmail.com. I personally answer every single one of them myself. Thank you so much for your time, and until next week, thanks and God bless.